Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Manchester City deliver a hammer blow to Arsenal's hopes in the title race with a 4-1 win over the Gunners at the Etihad. Is there any way back for Arsenal now? Plus, we assess the other key results of this midweek, including Forrest's crucial win over Brighton, Liverpool climbing to sixth after beating West Ham, Leicester coming from behind to draw at Leeds and more misery for Chelsea after defeat to Brentford. And last but not least, welcome back to the Premier League, Sheffield United. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Well, let's start where there is only one place mm. to start, mate. Um, Builders, the biggest game of the season. People talking of a title decider or certainly title control. Mm. Um, Manchester City host Arsenal. Arsenal have been ahead up to eight points at, at, at some point in the, in the table against the Manchester City that have hit bang in form at, at, at the moment. Um, I think I think I looked at the stats, Rob. Eleven games they've played all competitions at home, won all eleven, scored forty goals, um, and so it was always going to be a big challenge for Arsenal. Mm. In the end, mate, it was a challenge that they weren't quite up to. <clears throat> they weren't, um, and we'll we'll get into the details. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, just a big golfing difference in the class today and of the two teams. Um, but I want to start at the beginning, Rob, just in terms of the team, because it was an important part yeah. of it, the lineups and what happened there. Yeah. Pep Guardiola, we kind of, I did a tactics breakdown before the game about how they've been playing with John Stones going into midfield mm -hmm. and that midfield shape being a little bit different and, and all the stuff that they normally do. Yeah. Well, they did it against Bayern Munich in, the, yeah. in two games. Different today, mm -hmm. Rob, because they played pretty much a 4-4-2, four, four, yeah. really. Pretty yeah. simple. De Bruyne off of the big man, uh, Ullenander up front. And Arsenal's point of view, Granite Jacker was fit, Rob. That was the main yeah, concern with them. Of course, field, Rob yeah. Holdings continued for William Saliba. That's the only player that would take it away from their best setup. Mm. Um, but in terms of the lineups, Rob, kind of as expected, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was out there, and I think I threw out in, in, in our, um, you know, reading up a little bit. Some people were trying to second guess Arteta, and, and some suggestions were. If both teams play to their own style and groove and play well, City will win the game. Does Arteta need to do something a little different? Is there a little wrinkle that he needs to do? Now, we didn't necessarily see that because I think Arteta went in with the belief of his group. I remember I watched the first game back against uh, when they played at um, the Emirates. And Arsenal started the game pretty well. First off, I thought they were the, the better side. So I think there's a belief in the style of play, yeah. what you're trying to do. You know, so there was no Trossard possibly instead of Jesus. I think that was yeah. one that one or two people had talked of. There was a bit of thought about whether Rob Holding was up to it, whether, I don't know, you, you, you put uh, maybe Ben White there or could Porte drop in there. I mean, that was probably going to stretch it too much. So it was, it, was, it was as expected, Rob. But I have to say from pretty much the first minute through to the 90-odd whatever we, we finished at, Arsenal was second best. Mm. And I think it started from the first minute of the game. Mm. The way that, that, Ars that, that Man City played, yeah. and they did wrinkle it a little bit, like yeah. I just said. They did do something a little bit different that Arsenal and Arteta didn't react to. Yeah. They didn't change yeah. uh, given Man City's change. But from the first moment, high-press Arsenal, yeah. got them trying to play out. You know, it's one of them where it's kind of like, it's like, oh, God, here we go. And yeah. Arsenal yeah. try and play was, out. It, City are very risky, much up wasn't for it? a high press. Yeah, it felt risky. <laughs> and that put Arsenal in a mode of, oh, we can't play. Yeah. We can't get our game going. Yeah. You know, and, and they cough up the ball. They try mm. and hit it a little bit longer or it gets forced. They give yeah. up the ball. And then Man City, we're back in this mode, Rob, where they, they have a grip on the game. Mm. Possession, territory. It's ours, thank you. Diddle, 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 diddle. You know, through the centre. When it goes back to Arsenal, high press, you're yeah. going to give us the ball back. Yeah. And that was the first part, I thought, that, that Pep and City took control with. Yeah. The second part is what we did a little breakdown at half time is Kevin De Bruyne mm. and his position his relationship with Erlen Haaland, Haaland yeah. and how that worked. Explain yeah. that. Well, we, we saw it slightly different because often what we've seen with City is, is Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne going as, as two eights yep. either eight. side of, of Erlen Haaland. What, what was different with Pep is that Gundogan probably sat more often than not next to Rodri in midfield, so they were a two, and he played Kevin De Bruyne almost as a second striker. So yeah. there was like two up front. And then what would often, what would often happen is... Erlen Haaland's threat, size, pace, physicality, often occupied both Holding and Gabriel. He played between them, the two, and it allowed Kevin De Bruyne 
to find and exploit spaces either side of, of, of Thomas Partey. And Kevin De Bruyne, with his ability, with his football intelligence and his technical skills, basically ran the game from, from, that, from that position. Absolutely ran the game. I mean, we picked up on it early and, and, and sort of said after 10 minutes, wow, De Bruyne's picking up spots. Wonder what Arsenal are going to do. Well, what in the end was there was confusion between party whether he should go. Rob Holding was caught between uh, going and, and, and worrying about the threat of Haaland. There was more space in, in, in that area for Man City to, to do damage. And I think you said on air, it wasn't a day for the Bernardo Silvers in the wide areas. And, 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 no. But they had an important role to play, Rob, and, and it was a point well made that they have to stay there for De Bruyne's position to be effective. If they start narrowing in... De Bruyne has less space to move in. Arsenal are better equipped to deal with it. But by staying out and not being as involved... Stretch out the, the stretch City out the back team, City basically. Team. And then we just saw Haaland and uh, Kevin De Bruyne pretty much dominate the central areas of the pitch. And, and, and I want to make two points on, on Erling Haaland, who some have suggested they're a worse team with him in there. I thought today was a day that showed you Erling Haaland brings another dimension to City that's useful in games against decent opposition. Because mm. you can go back to front quickly, you can hold the ball up, he's threatening behind stretches of back line, and this allows Kevin De Bruyne and maybe Gundogan's and Bernardo Silva's on the day to find those pockets of space in midfield and hurt the opposition. Pe Pep's such a smart manager, Rob, mm. isn't it? And if, I guess if you sit down and you look at this Arsenal team, OK... We know what they do. Yeah. They play with Odegaard and, and Gunnar Xhaka either side yeah. of Thomas Partey. I, I think they'll push on and oh, mark hi. our general central midfield players, which was Rodri and uh, Ilkay Gundogan. Gundogan today. And we'll, yeah. let, we'll let Kevin De Bruyne be a bit of a problem for, mm, for, uh, for, for Thomas, Thomas Partey. Partey. Yeah. And, and we also know, by the way, that we, if we do go direct, they're kind of a bit weak there at the moment yeah. without Saliba. Mm. Um, Erlen Haaland can absolutely dominate yeah. Rob Holding. And Gabriel, <coughs> to be fair. And Gabriel. And, you know, Mikel Arteta, after as Rob said, that, that City were very, very direct. Yeah. They, there was the one time, of course, the first goal. The first right? goal there wasn't many times yeah. Arsenal tried a high press because yeah. they got, as I said earlier, they were kind of pinned in their own half. But the long ball comes up, really long ball, and Haaland does, does, an, an, does an a brilliant job of touch, taking care of it. Takes a turn, plays in De Bruyne, 1-0. Yeah. And, and that kind of was where, I don't know whether Arteta or Rob, did he miss a trick? And not because, by the way, we can speak to this because yeah. I've done that a zillion times, yeah. and I know what it's like when, in my year, it was um, in my era, it was uh, it was Burkham, yeah, and I've got him to course. worry about behind me. Mm -hmm. I've got central midfield players to worry about, and, and you and you and you pull people in to help you come yeah. narrower. You come help me here. If he goes behind me, my centre back, yeah, you mark back, him. Yeah. But there was so much space. Yeah. Rob Holden didn't really want to do it. No. And Thomas Partey didn't really want to do it. I just, I just think whether you look back at that, if you're Mikel Arteta, Rob, yeah. does he think you know what? Granit Xhaka marking Rodri. Who cares? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 it was the other one. And Odegaard, oh, Odegaard, and Odegaard, Odegaard, Odegaard pushing Odegaard on yeah, to against Ilgar Rodri Gundogan. Who cares? Gundogan, yeah. Let one of those have the ball. Yeah, let, yeah, let one of yeah, those be free, don't and you come him. back. I mean, if someone's yeah. got to stay man-to-man -man on him, they've still got a spare It's, it's a good point, and it, it's somewhere I wanted to go with, with the podcast because um, I don't think there should be too many regrets for Arsenal, wherever he ends up. Disappointment today, and he ends up 4-1, we'll talk about maybe some of the detail in the goals. But just in, t in terms of Mikel Arteta, Rob, and, and I was saying because it's his first title challenge. He's been part of Pep's group, and he's been number two, and we've seen what he's done early part of the season. Up to 30 games have been immaculate, and played some brilliant football and, and have thrilled us. But it, in a game like today, Rob, I, I was kind of put myself in his shoes because you said, you know, you see it. We're stand, you're, you're at touch level, and, and I've stood there a couple of times. I've been a coach when I've watched games a couple of times. A manager back in the day said to me, come in the, in the dugout and see it from there. Sometimes you don't see things for well when you're down at, at that level. But haven't they got technical stuff? So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Is, is, was, is this part of the learning for Mikel Arteta that maybe on games like that it's not going well, maybe sometimes you don't always see it. It doesn't come as clear. I mean, we've got great angles and we've got a tactical cam that gives us a full yeah. picture. So we can see the pockets there. But when you're down there in, in the weeds and looking in, into the game, yeah, yeah. maybe it doesn't stand out as much. Mm. Is this, is it, you know, it's part of his learning in those situations. Like, let me check upstairs. What are you seeing? Is this something I could be doing? Do any, 
I'm not saying it is, it isn't. I'm not saying it, it, it would it would have worked or not. I'm just saying that he's learning, Rob. And today has to be a learning for him in terms of where he wants to take this team going forward. There are going to be days, hopefully for Arsenal, in big competitions, whether it be domestic or in Europe, that some they're getting hurt somehow. And he needs to be able to deal with that hurt quickly. I'll give you another angle on it. Maybe he still believes, and mm. by the way, Man City don't have 12 players. If they have an advantage yeah, it somewhere... it looks like they do, to be honest. Yeah, Arsenal also have an advantage somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. whoever has the ball and possesses yeah, well can take okay. advantage of that. If you look at this lineup on a bit of paper, you'd be like, we'd be like, well, it's Partey, Odegaard and, and Granit Xhaka against yeah. two midfield players then. De Bruyne's pen is number 10. Yeah, if yeah. Arsenal could have had the ball for large yeah, periods three, yeah, and I'm, three versus yeah, two, two yeah. De Bruyne may be coming mm. back at Rob to help. But he doesn't want to do that. Yeah. It could have been different in there. It could have been different. This is a classic example of whoever has better possession, yeah. you their put your system will on your, is going to work over yeah, the your, others. Your, your will. And, yeah. and, and maybe Arteta felt like, if we just got our passing going, we can give them problems. They never... But they never got their they passing going, did they? No, they never got it going. Yeah. And they haven't had it going over the last few weeks, yeah. Yeah. which is another reason why he might have taken a, 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 a defensive cautious, step yeah. and say, actually... And again, we, we talked about it, and, and we don't know the answer. I wondered whether he didn't want to show negativity. Like, hold on, this is City, we're going to change. Actually, we've got where we've yeah, got yeah. doing something. We, we can take our let, advantage. Let, let's go yeah, with maybe. our advantage. And, and listen, he was brave. It didn't work out for him. Maybe it's part of his learning. Um, but in the end, th th those two centrally, Erling Haaland and, and uh, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, dominated right. the, the football game and, and pretty much won it for City. Right. We're going to go to, to two, both of these clubs, Rob. Yeah. And let's like a little, make a little assessment right now. Arsenal, yeah. where are you in terms of... I think we, we, people who regularly watch this or listen to our podcast yeah. know we, we spoke all season about how Arsenal have done an incredible job getting Absolutely. to where they are. We've yeah. talked about it, it's a learning curve for yeah. these young players. And I think we, we, we'd agree now that they ain't quite got the tools yet. Not yet. In no. you know, all yeah. aspects of mm. being a pro, yeah. of winning a Premier League title against a team as good as that. Yeah. All that being said, right, and that's obviously important stuff, mm. have Arsenal disappointed you know, these last few weeks, and it wasn't lost today. You know, yeah, the last couple yeah. of games, for yeah, example, this, like sorry, the three draws. Wasn't yeah, when you it, when you don't can't sorry. beat West Ham yeah. United, you can't yeah. beat bottom club Southampton. And if the they, if the nature of their yeah. drop off, yeah. Again, we're not going to take anything away from where they're at. They're, they're, no. they're like sixteen or fifteen, sixteen points better than anybody else. Yeah, by yeah, the way, the United United City. And... But has it been a bit disappointed in the yeah. way they've fallen away yeah. again? Because it happened in the Champions League last season, and Spurs nipped in there for top four spot. It's happened again, so that's a worry. Um, but I think, I think a lot of the outcome, uh, uh, the opinion of, of, of Arsenal will be led by what happens from now to the end of the season, Rob, for me. If, if from now to the end of the season drops off a bit and it's a bit... Uh, yeah, it leaves, the, and it leaves a bit of a bad taste. Yeah, come I come think, on, lad. Show, show I think it's a bit good. Again. I think it shows we can go again. We've seen a number of teams, including Liverpool, go close one year and win it the next. Now, again, I'm not saying Arsenal are ready to win it right now because I'm still not sure they've got enough tools, as you say, and experience. When, when you saw that Liverpool team, it had a great mix of, of mm. talent, of experience, of, of ability, of presence, yeah, of physicality. Man manager and experience. Manager and all those things. Arsenal are still getting there. Yeah, they're building. A good summer of building. I mean, Declan Rice has been talked of. You get a quality Declan Rice, a quality midfield player and another striker yeah, and keep building. the group you've got. Because yeah. one of the things that, that stood out today, and again, you mentioned the, the subs that Pep can, Pep can yeah, make it's, it's... and the subs that Arsenal make a, a night and day. But he's built a squad and he's got the finances to build a group of players that's incredible. Arsenal are on the way with this group. To sh they've shown after 30 games, Rob, they, they were right up there and they were, they were leading. All of a sudden, it, it, it's fallen away. They've got to then build with what they've got and go again. Mm. Just switching over to Manchester City, Rob, on yeah. this. Um, I mean, talk about like trying to compare the two, right? You've got literally the finished article in Man City champions yeah, yeah, yeah. that bring in Erlen Haaland yeah. and you have you know a group in Arsenal that nowhere near the finished yeah, article so yeah. so that but in terms of the finished article in terms of what we're seeing now from Pep's Man City and I don't want to get into a you know a sickly kind of you know loving with Man City but it's blimmin' remarkable we, 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 
I, I think at times, though, Rob, because of because it's Pep, because of money, because of the football club, we don't sometimes give. Everybody's almost felt like, and and and, and it's true that be brilliant for Arsenal to win it. You know, everybody who comes with that line that it's a different team and it's Arsenal and all the history. But that takes away from City, from the position they've been in, to keep hunting, to keep winning, to keep chasing. They've taken five years of, of Liverpool and wrung Liverpool out in the end, winning by points and that. They've taken an Arsenal with an eight-point gap and yeah. thing and wrung them out and, and, and drawn it back. And they don't sometimes get enough credit. I, I said today in the studio... The headlines all season is Arsenal winning it or Arsenal bottling it. And it doesn't do enough credit to Man City, by the way. The team who could win it three times on the bounce. Mm. You know, and win it with inverted fullbacks when we didn't know what they were. Win it with a false nine when you, you need to have a striker. Then you get a striker and people say, oh, they're not as good a team with a guy at the top. And win it again. I mean, Pep continues to push it. We've talked about the defensive side. There's a balance that's changed it. City has yeah. been helpful. That's important. Yeah. That some people thought Pep wouldn't go to. He's all about the beautiful football. He's all about possession. Well, let me tell you, he's changed. A little bit. He's changed yeah. a little bit to, yeah, to make yeah, them better. Yeah, we spoke about it, The we? balance is, is yeah. you know, very early on the season, Rob, I, 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 I had a phrase of saying, the best balanced team in the, in the country was Arsenal. Because Saliba, they had the best defensive record and they were scoring goals for fun up front. That's changed. Defensively, 10 goals in the last four games. Defensively, bad mistakes, but, individual but, errors. Whereas Man City have got the balance back and, and better. Arsenal's balance has gone a little bit the other way. Rico Lewis, the period in the season yeah. where he came in mm. and he looked pretty good, but it was around the time where they started to drop a few Dro points, yeah, a, yeah, few a few bad results. And that yeah. change... Mm of bringing an extra defender in, it was Nathan Ake, or it was yeah. Akanji, or it was yeah. Dia, you know, to, to, to establish themselves into that group, changed everything. Yeah. And that has made a big difference to their balance, to their defensive physicality we're yeah. now. I mean, there was a moment when they're all, they're all kind of, yeah, they're all a little bit up, one, and we're like looking at each other like, look at the size of City. Yeah, yeah. They, they, all of a sudden, Rodri and yeah, Diaz came Kanji, in there, Harlem was Diaz, in there, Carl yeah. Walker's a big guy. Yeah. I mean, they got, they got they, they're, I, can't, I mean, there's a mm. big physical team now, yeah. as well as being, Super silky. So it's, it is remarkable what the football that they play. Mm. And are we looking at a city now, Rob? Until Pep, and yeah. by the way, just on Pep, there was, there was a few shots today, and we, we, we'd often pull some packages yeah, together yeah, in a video right, of, of Pep. Today, yeah. But we didn't get around to it today. But I can't believe how fired up he yeah, is yeah, still. Yeah. Still, after all the seasons, he's still wound up like they this. Score, his first... They score the first goal, which is probably built out of how they've realised that they can go to Hall and he combines... He's, um, De Bruyne scores. He goes running to yeah. the touchline, grabs Edison over, and over uh, Edison, Edison yeah. and starts hammering him about his distribution. And I don't know whether he wanted him to go long or what he was playing or how he was playing. Yeah. But it was like the drive and, and the, you know, there was one with the, um, there was a free kick where somebody came in behind Jack and just caught his, his thing. It wasn't a foul. And uh, referee gave, gave man Arsenal thing. He was up and he... I mean, that, that must be the drive that you go in every day, Rob, that, that drives you as, as a player to keep giving of your best. Mm, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it was a day through for the central players today. Often the wide players, you know, and Pep talks yeah. about it, literally talks about it, about talking, uh, attacking the outside, attacking the inside. Yeah, today, today was inside, he stretched out yeah. Arsenal yeah. Yeah. and said, you know what, they're weak in the middle, let's attack through there. And that was the, the main Let, the let main me tell you one thing I, I took out of, of the game as well. And it was just a little point, but it, it kind of stuck with me. It happened three times in the game. And I, I remember making a note. And it was Jack Grealish, my friend, who's a poster boy, really. You know, the hair, the look, the way you, he plays. He's on top of his form at the moment, did an interview for the game, and he's chirpy and he's looking forward to it. I wrote down three times, Rob, on a day when it's not really his day. It's not a, a Grealish day. He sprinted at full pace to get back mm. to defend Bukayo he's done, that, he's done that multiple times now. And I'm, and, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this, is a, this is a footballer, Rob. This is a technical guy. An this artist. is a, an artist who's in the team to be thing. But he's, he's obviously now bought in. He's obviously driven maybe through the manager, through the other good pros he sees every week with good habits who have got driven. He's become Man City clone now. And it wasn't his day today, but he realised that running back and disarming mm. uh, Saka mm. was part of his role. And that's the, the other thing that Pep gets out of. 
great, great players. Mm. They know their job. They know that, that they've still got to do the other side. One more thing to mention, Rob, before we get on to maybe quickly with them, kind of the bigger picture for yeah. the rest of the season. We had a record broken today, my friend. Mm. Berlin Haaland, 33 Premier lad. League goals. Yeah, in a 38-game in a 38 game season. season is yeah. a record. It's the most Absolutely. ever. He's got 29 appearances, 33. I mean, got more 49 goals. goals in all competitions. 49 all there. competitions. Just a quick line on him. Uh, I mean, he, he's been he's been everything that everybody expected. He's been more, I would yeah. say, Rob. He's been more than everybody expected. Because some weren't sure. Do you remember? Let's go back to the charity shield, the community shield, what it is. And you remember Darwin Nunez and him? Yeah, they were new, new players. Yeah. And Nunez scored, and then was saying this. And he Who's going to get more goals? Of, he could put over the top. You know, it's going to take a while. And he, it was interesting. I think Graham Lasso made a, a, um, a great start where he said, I think for every 20 touches, he scores a goal or something. Was yeah, it, is, is in number? terms of his touches, his touches Premier League touches the ball. ball. Yeah. Every 20 touches. He gets <laughs> it, which is just in, an incredible number. That he's not totally involved. I thought today his involvement in his option for the team was as important as, as I've seen him. Yeah. And if that's Sergio Aguero, you can't play that way. If that's false nine... Phil Foden, you can't play that way. Today, against a good Arsenal team who are coming to, to, to win the game and, and get a lead at the top of the table, the ability to go into him, his touch is better Occupied than people Occupied both centre-halves, didn't Occupied both, okay, he, both of them. Both of them. He bullied them. He outskilled them. He, he assisted De Bruyne. Yeah. He scored himself a goal. goal. Right. I thought that was an all-round performance of an, 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 a dimension that Pep's got that he can go to in, his, in, in times of need. Number nine, mate. There's lots of talks of false number nines, and they can do that, but that's a proper, number nine. proper number nine, the world's best number nine right mm. now. All right, just to summarise, Rob, in terms of the title race now, um, we're kind of talking as if this is all over. Yeah, And, yeah. and Arsenal of 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 It feels that way, doesn't it? It, it feels does that. feel that way, but, but it, it, listen, mathematics nothing, wise... Nothing, this is the Premier League and nothing can surprise you, but based on where we are... I said the only way Arsenal can win it is going into the Etihad and winning and not just grabbing the points, grabbing the power and grabbing the momentum and saying this is ours and we're going to win out. It just feels like that opportunity has gone now. I think so. I mean, it'll be, it'll be one of the most astonishing final few weeks of all time mm. if Man yeah. City somehow yeah. don't yeah. find a way of finishing uh, this off. So, so I'll chuck out there. I think they've got, was it eight Premier League games? Seven... Seven left. Seven Premier League games, possibly three Champions League games, two semi finals and a final. Yeah. And FA one Cup FA Cup, 11 games. He's one bad performance in those 11 games for City. He's one bad performance. Some, not one day that's not great. Could be a Champions League semi final. It could be an FA Cup final. Could be the FA it Cup. Could be right. a it could be a Premier League, could yeah, be a yeah, Premier League, league. game. One day. But they need more than one, one yeah, for Arsenal. I for think. Arsenal. Is more yeah. than one. And so it takes us to, and it doesn't have to be a long conversation now because we've got plenty of time, the treble, my friend. Mm. Sort of com conversation that's not been born that much because of what Arsenal were doing and people think. I mean, since Manchester United not been done, uh, incredible feat, FA Cup. It's been done by Liverpool, but it was a, it was oh, a, it it was was a, a league, league cup, cup and not the FA Cup. Now, friend, Steve, Steve, Steve Nichols, Steve Nichols, Nichols, Nichols just, sent me a text yeah, like, hey, just, just us, like, yeah. you know, there was a bit of trouble and, and done we're, before. we're always bowing to that great Liverpool yeah. team and Stevie yeah. Nick, uh, friend of the, of the podcast. But in terms of what that would mean, Rob, it, it takes Pep and Man City to another level, doesn't it? It does. That, then we're into that conversation of like, Best, best ever. Best ever Premier League era. And, you know, we got to talk best ever top flight, like top European, flight of yeah. English mm. English football of all yeah. time. Now, mm. there's there's tons. Of, I mean, I, we yeah. don't need to do yeah. that now. Yeah. But that's what you're talking about. Mm. And that Man United side, I mean, that Champions Cut. League final Cut. and all those celebrations. That was in our pomp, wasn't it? We, we, we knew all we that. Knew, we, yeah, that was astonishing to watch. But City do it differently, mm. don't they? Absolutely Even that final different. Man United, they get the goal. It's kind yeah. of really last ditch. They, they, yeah. But this City team, I feel like, they do it in such a dominating way that I, I haven't seen before, Rob. I, I just haven't. And and we'll see whether they can... Real Madrid yeah. is an incredibly yeah, two, difficult... two games against Real Madrid. Yeah. They're um, going to play United in the FA Cup final of all teams who want to stop I mean, them. that I could be... I mean, uh, yeah, that could be anything. Yeah. What a great game that's going to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, listen, uh, yeah. flying along, ticking just, along, absolutely. I just, you know, it's just... I, I, I feel a bit 
disappointed though, yeah, that game. I, you know, the same, I've, you know, I've written the same thing down. It, it, I just got the sh- shame. We didn't see the Arsenal yeah. who could have really tested Man- Manchester City. That's my biggest disappointment. What I would say, and I just wanted to finish on this, Rob, that yeah. it was a good, it was around 70 minutes on the clock. The Arsenal fans, you could hear them in the Etihad, were singing for Arsenal, were getting behind the players. It was almost like they'd appreciated what's, what's gone on to this come point. From, and they've, what they've, they've come from, Rob. They've come huge fifth. leap, huge leap from And, and from they, they were, you know, they were beaten by a better team today. Mm. Mikel Arteta said it, you can see it with your eyes and hopefully they can finish off the season in good form and listen, who knows, win the next five add, games, add, get add 15 more in the points. Summer. Yeah, Spend some money some in the summer yeah. and try and increase 90, the quality. Uh, 90 points as well would be uh, a, a real yeah. step up and, and a mark for this Arsenal awesome mm. team. Mm. All right, mate, other games. Yes, uh, lots sir. of games this midweek. I mean, mm. there's there's a lot of games now, given the World Cup, yeah. and there's the jamming yeah. a lot of games in. Over uh, yesterday and today, Nottingham Forest, Rob, was a big winner today. My goodness. Massive this is, winner. This is a massive, incredible result. 3-1 against Brighton, which lifts them, as I look at my league table. Lifts them into... To 17th. Just, yeah, just... Just a, outside. Just a point outside. Yeah, uh, um, Leicester. But With Leicester and Leeds Rory, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in a minute, but yeah. It's a Forest team that missed penalty through Brennan Johnson to open the game. Yeah. They go 1-0 down against Brighton, and then they come back just before half-time, get a second and, and a third goal. And the scenes at the end with um, Steve Cooper in the city ground, and uh, Gibbs White did an interview and was talking about how they still believe in themselves they're very much. Mm. And I, I've got a, a real affinity for Steve mm. Cooper, that he, it's been difficult. I'm so delighted he's been given the chance to keep Forest yeah. in. There was a, there was certainly a period where I think ownership group were thinking we've got to change. We've seen change doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mm. And he's been given a chance. What I like about him, Rob, he has a plan. He has a plan. He had a good he plan the, other, the weekend. He had a great it? plan with Liverpool. Mm. He has a plan against Brighton. And I know it's a Brighton team that may be disappointed from the semi-final of, of the FA Cup. But um, I like a, a guy who's trying, who's prepared and trying things. And listen, he's another who'll be learning. It'll be a great learning curve if he can get through. And um, they've just got the capacity, certainly at home, and home form's been um, magnificent for them. I think 70% of the Dropped of off the a points. bit recently, but Has, I think hasn't in been general, quite as good yeah. yet. But they, they've got, with home form and him in charge, I still think they've got the capacity to win games, Rob. They've got winning a couple. There. They've yeah, won they, seven games, Rob. Yeah. And, and we always think like nine or ten to, to get safe. They've so still got work to do. Yeah. And that result now is an awful one for others down cool. there. You know, you look at Everton, Rob, 28 points, second from bottom right now. Yeah. Leeds we'll get to in a second. Um, so, huge uh, result for them. Let's just jump to, to West Ham United, Rob. Mm. West Ham 1, Liverpool 2. Feeling that Liverpool are finishing just, strong. Yeah. They're, they're finding their way and their front players are coming back into form and they're, and they're winning games. And they've, yeah, still got, code, they've still got a chance of the top four. There's six games yeah. remaining. There's a six-point gap, I believe. Yeah, there is yeah, to Man six United. Points. It's going to be really difficult. Tough to, yeah, really But they'll tough, keep but going. Yeah, they'll, they'll keep, keep going. going. It was interesting. I don't know if you, there was a, um, a couple of uh, interviews out with, with Klopp. He was talking about getting ready for next season. Yeah, I saw he's his, already I saw starting to think about <clears throat> I saw his professor. And, I and he's talking about, <clears throat> you know, giving this, the guys a three-week holiday, then getting back, I think you're saying July 8th. 8th, 8th is it? 8th, July 8th or July 10th or something? The July ones that, 6th, I heard. Did he want some back in? Start the internationals their gonna, these internationals with so the those guys get a few days more. and all that. Yeah. But he's already, I think, revved up for what next season's going to be. The interesting point with Liverpool is how much money does he spend? Does he get an opportunity to, to, to bring in in the air as he wants? Yeah. And you've talked about it. This change of system is something that he's going to go it's, with. It's kind of they'll want to do their reps and do their work yeah. early on so they're in good shape to start the season. Yeah, yeah. so good yeah. for them and good yeah. for Liverpool. They've waited a long time, story. Liverpool fans, yeah. have waited to find some form and some momentum. Mm. It's late. Just coming late, yeah. But, just but coming. We'll see. Yeah. Story, my friend. West London. Oh, Chelsea gosh. Football Club. Oh, blimey. Play Brentford. Now... I lived in London, spent many a, a, a day at Griffin Park, the Brentford Old Stadium. I used to go and watch Brentford on a regular basis in all the leagues, Rob, down, down there. And at the time, Chelsea were winning Champions League and FA Cups and league Where titles. Were Brentford? And, they were and Brentford down. were in like the third tier of English football. So Brentford go to Chelsea, Stamford Bridge, beat them 2 0. Probably would feel that, you know, in terms of possession and the way they play, better structure. Better, better, run, better, run, better run team. Um, was that four straight defeats now for Frank? Was five, that five, five straight it's defeats five. For, for Frank. Talk of Pochettino coming in in yeah. the next week, but we're hearing Frank will still be in charge. So let's talk about it. Although 
Pochettino Good will one. be in the background. Mm. How does that feel? Well, uh, uh, it's two ways to look at it. I think we look at it differently. Here. Yeah. I get it that he doesn't want to take the reins right now. Why? Well, because it, it, it's, it's a tough situation immediately to get into and, and get good results. If you finish the last, what they got left now? Six games. That, that, and they lose another three or four. Dare I say, it's not about the next six games for him. Yeah, it's about Does it's he about want to be learning. tarnished with this team and this, this current season? Uh, I, I hear you. Okay, sorry. Like no, no, finish. no. Just, just, yeah. I still think, Rob, that he can be really close to it, watching, of course, studying all the games, yeah. get a sense around the training ground of what players are like, if he can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I, 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 I you've got a good it. argument yeah. as well. I'm just saying, like, why, why, when the confidence is rock bottom, when the when the when the fans are a little bit edgy, six games, if it's still bad, it it just might throw a little bit of a negative tinge to it as it well, starts well, out. Well, I know his record in inverted commas, you know the, the Premier League record and the stats and that. But this is the, the, Chelsea's position is beyond that. Chelsea's position is for me. I, if it was me, I would say get yourself in the door. Frank can still be front of house. I want to know about players, Rob. I want to try some yeah. systems. I want to. I want to see, you know, personalities. I want to. I want to get in. I want to see if Aubameyang could be rehabilitated or not. I want to know about Pulisic. I want to see Ziyech. I want to. There's all the little things. Can't he see? Can't he see them without being being he, the top he, man? He could, but he, from from distance, it's just, when you're working for them, when somebody's in charge, it's different. It's different, Rob, than the guy standing there. And I don't know. And you maybe make a, no, a good I, point. No, listen, I ain't, I ain't convinced on it. You may be in, in your good side, point, he gets a sense of. When, yeah. the, when the owner says, well, we're going to sell him, we're going to sell him. Yeah. Whoa, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, the way, the way he works in the Correct. training ground, I, I want to keep him. I, I can see and he might do, I'm just saying whether he can do that he can maybe whilst do not that. being yeah, the, the Maybe, maybe that's the, the, the compromise that's going on behind the scenes. Mm. The other one I chucked at you, and, and again, it's, it's not a huge point, but I don't think it would do Frank Lampard any arm, and I don't know what the situation is. And I don't know if he could be part of Pochettino's staff. Might be his assistant. I know he's got a team, but a, na a named... I think it would do Frank well in terms of learning. Posh, from... don't care. Posh doesn't care about Frank Lampard. No, I, I know. He's not there to teach him. I, I know he He'll doesn't. He'll bring his own staff in. I know he doesn't. But from Frank's point oh, of yeah, view... yeah, great for him. I'm saying if you could get the opportunity. I'm also saying for Chelsea, Frank might be the, the, the buffer between the fans. And, you know, there's a few experts. And if things don't go well, the experts thing will come out. And Do you think Chelsea... Given what Frank's done at the club and, and some great in the first season, but on a bad run, is it beneficial for that still to be part of the first team picture? Or Frank, we love you. Is there any value in? Is it? Yeah, is, is it value? value? Yeah. Is it value? It's in value Frank. for Frank, of course. He will yeah. learn a ton. Another yeah. somebody yeah. to work with stays at the club that's his club that he yeah. loves. That club. Yeah. I just don't know yeah. whether a clean break is is maybe better for Poch and the new regime coming yeah, in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I'm just saying from Frank's point of view, I don't think it would be the be worst for, thing for him no. to try and be part of a group and learn and see and understand and maybe help his career go on to the next I mean, thing. Just, I know, I know, we'll jump on quickly into the next game in a second, Rob, but how is this, how is this happening? How is it? Chelsea they're, the fifth, they're the fifth team well, in London they're, they're, right now, Chelsea. The they're the <clears> fifth <throat> team in London. I, I, I did a note. So Arsenal above them. Tottenham are above them, Brentford are above them, Fulham are above them. The fifth team in London. Brentford are eight points. Brentford are I mean, eight it's points. It's incredible, back. mate. I mean, these, so, so, again, we, we didn't see the game in full detail mm. today, but all these players, I mean, they're not ready or not up to it. What the, what the, I mean, it's, we ain't got time now, but it's yeah. still astonishing it's story. to me. It's like, an absolute story. They can be, they, the results are that bad, yeah. given 700 million yeah, dollars. Yeah, and the spent. quality of player. Just look well, through. They, that's what I'm saying. Look Where's the quality? The, the quality they, they got quality? Yeah, they have, have they? got quality. Well, why not? Well, We're not you just expect it, but... it to, to be a bit better yeah. in terms yeah. of the results right now. Other games, mate. Wolves 2, Crystal Palace 0. Oh. Yeah. Done Wolves a good job, by the way. So, by the way, Lopetegui the, 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 got, in, got into the job. They were bottom of the table, mate. Yeah. Bottom of the table He's going nowhere. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky good job. Sneaky Unai Emery time. Very, very good job. Talking of Unai Emery. Aston Villa oh. one, Fulham nil. Villa sit fifth. Amazing. Fifth above Liverpool and Tottenham. I mean, yep. incredible experience, understanding, better football. Scored in every game he's, since he's, he's taken charge of the football club. Seen better, you know, Tyrone Mings, who looked like not couldn't get in Stevie's team at one point. Captains he taken off him, rehabilitated. Great example of 
of, of the importance of the coach yeah. and what difference they can make. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when, you, when we look at manager of the year and, and we'll, we'll get there a little but later. But isn't that the Chelsea bit that you say, <clears> when we say talent and we say, there is talent there, but yeah. it's not being yeah. used right, worked well, right. Yeah, and I agree with that. But I'm still astonished they can't. Like, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but manager of the year conversation will definitely cool. be in there for Unai yeah. Emery. It will be for Eddie Howe. Yeah. Maybe a couple of others. We'll see how Pep gets on with this season. Um, but no, very good. And the last one, Rob. Yeah, I, let's and go I, to and it. I, I left it last because I had a good look at this game. Yeah. Leicester hmm. went to Ellen Road and yeah. they got a 1 1 draw. Leeds yeah, 1, 1 down, Leicester City 1. Yeah, second half. Uh, it was Sinistera. Yeah, with a goal. He got injured, actually. He had to come off, didn't he? Sinister. Yeah, and Jamie Vardy worried. scored in the 80th yeah. minute. Um, kind of vintage Vardy. Yeah, gets played to him. Fired up. Yeah. Big celebration. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I just from this team, my, my first note in the first kind of 25, 30 minutes is Leicester a different level to Leeds. Yeah. Leicester a mm. good side, Rob. Yeah. Back to the same point. Yeah. Different manager. Yeah, talented players. They looked might get a control of possession. Yeah. Madison was running the game. Yeah. You know, Tielemans, uh, Tielemans gets yeah. a goal. That, see the yeah, goal? See the strike? Beautiful strike. That, that was, yeah, um, I mean, just offside, wasn't just it? Just offside. Jacket, yeah. I just thought, looking at them, wow. Dean mm. Smith and, and yeah, he's got them organised. Shakespeare, he? got them in a decent JT, spot. Yeah, organised, and they look like they're playing with a bit of passion again. I mean, Brendan Rodgers, mate. You know, some people saying yeah. that he shouldn't have lost his job. He he he's put them into a terrible situation. They, they almost became. I felt when I watched you, they're a bit passive. Like Leicester need an edge. Jamie Vardy comes on, right. scores, right, give right, the exactly fans right. some. Yeah. They play when they play with an edge. They're because a different level. They should not be down there. They should no. not be down but there. But if they if they do the nice, let's yeah, play think, football, nicey nicey, they're not as good as they think when they do it that way. I I, I just come away from that game, and I know Leeds United, you know, expect yeah. they go ahead yeah. and you want to. They are not as good as Leicester. Yeah, Leicester and, yeah. and based on that, Leicester, for me, yeah, I think will Leicester find a out. way out I, of I, it. I've always thought Leicester will. And Leeds w- worry me. And Leeds massively worry me. Leeds worry me. With they had a great chance, didn't they? Patrick Bamford well, on the four posts as well. Patrick Bamford, Rob. <clears throat> and I know what he's done in the past. Yeah. And I know, bless him, he's had some bad injury issues. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't move very well at the moment. He's not running well. He's not, he doesn't look comfortable. He can't... It, it, and I understand why a manager that's fairly new in is going to want to play Patrick Bamford. Yeah, mistake yeah. for me. It's a mistake. When you've got Wilfred Nyonto on the bench mm, yeah, and a couple of others, you've got Jorginho yeah. Ruter. Ruter. There's a record Ruter. signing, mm. Rob. Record signing at Leeds United. They're, and even playing. Yeah. I mean, that money could be mm. used. I mean, that, that, that's why Victor Orta, the director of football, is yeah. getting stick now from the fans. Yeah, like, well, hang on a minute. We spent a lot of money on players that aren't yeah. even playing. So I, I didn't like that selection. And maybe he can he can stay in the team and score the goals necessary to get him out of trouble. Yeah. Um, Rodrigo on the other side of it loved it, loved mm, his performance. Rob yeah, Lo- yeah, loved yeah. his performance. Energetic, Absolutely worked yeah, his socks yeah, off. Got yeah. stuck in, fired the fans mm. up. That's quality. Play him up front. Yeah. Play him yeah, up front. There's somebody else in behind. Yeah. Harrison came on. I think he wasn't starting. Harrison again. started. Yeah. No, not um, Harrison. Aaron's Aaronson. Aronson. Aronson yeah. um, so they got other. They got yeah. really good. Quick, energetic, energetic for, players, yeah. but it's still defensively. Yeah. And and Patrick Bamford, oh, what a chance it was for them to, yeah. to, but to, to score. And, and I, it was a great draw for everybody else down there. You draw games yeah. against your rivals, Rob, oh, and it great. gives everybody else down there a, a bit of a break. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless there's a quality from Leeds United, you know the um, the cross from, from Harrison from yeah, Sinister's header ball. into the ground yeah. was a great ball. Um, but Leicester are better, and Leicester are going are going to show that in the remaining five games. With the quality, with the edge, mm. I think to get out of the trouble. But it's going to be great. It's going to be a great yeah, fight listen, down there. It's going to be a great fight down there, and plenty of teams in it. Listen, mate, we're going to wrap it mm. up for this weekend. I think we're all looking forward to tonight, the biggest game of the season. But the chasing champions had a bit too much for the leaky lose. One leaders. more thing, my friend. We oh, should we should tip we our hat a little bit to, to Sheffield United. Oh, Sheffield getting United. Getting ahead of myself. The blades. A little bit, yeah, yeah, the, the, the blades. blades found themselves. Paul Heckenbottom. Paul Heckenbottom was still... Kete came in after Chris Wilder. Stayed on. Stayed in touch with the, with the club. Has done a good job. It's never easy, especially big club. Second time down in the championship. Yeah, second year there. Yeah. We're going to see a little bit more of Oliver McBurney. Oliver Sander McBurney. Berger, a player that Oliver I really Berger. like. Mostly love Sandy Berger. John Egan, I favorites. think, still at centre-back. Um, and a few others that they've added in. So, Sheffield United, and that's the... You know, yeah. the ones that have been, ones that are still on the parachute money, the next three years, because you'll yeah. still get some of that Premier yeah. League money, have an advantage, mate, when it comes to keeping players and buying some new ones to get back up again. And one of our stats guys told us today, which is quite an interesting point, that the playoff finals, the Championship playoff finals, is <coughs> May 27th. So we'll know the three teams who come up before we'll know the teams that go down. On Middlesbrough. May- 
May the 20th. Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough. I, my I just, old team. I'll just give you a lead in there to, well, to get your Middlesbrough in there. Well, Aren't they playing Sunderland? Might be. Ooh. Tony Mowbray, Ooh. an old teammate of mine, a legend of Middlesbrough, might, is the manager of Sunderland. Let's make, Local look, rivals. Let's not make this podcast about you, mate. Okay. It was about the big game. It was, it was a big game, top of the table, chasing champions, too good for the leaky leaders. The KDB inspired City, four goals. With one reply from Rob Holding for Arsenal uh, City, just too good for them on the day. We'll be back on Sunday, that's April the 30th, we'll recap match week 34. There's loads of great games down at the bottom end of the table as a uh, fight for relegation. And then form Liverpool take on Spurs at Anfield. But for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.